Abi Ahmed has been observed delivering lectures on television to various professionals, including medical doctors, IT professionals, lawyers, economists, and artists, projecting a know-it-all attitude. His behavior has generated a sentiment among some that can be summed up as, we don't need Google, we have Abi. However, his numerous speeches over the past five years have often been criticized for their lack of depth and have been seen as pieced together from YouTube videos, seemingly intended to impress and showcase his knowledge rather than providing substantive insights and directions. Abi was born into the Muslim faith and studied the Quran, but he later he converted to the prosperity gospel version of Christianity, an uncommon occurrence in Ethiopia. His childhood name was Abiyat and changed it to Abi. Nobody knows why he changed it. You were born into a traditional family of simple means to a mother who was an Amara. Abi's accounts of his mother's heritage have shown inconsistency. In local media, he has claimed that she is of Oromo origin, but during his Nobel Prize acceptance, it was reported that she had Amhara heritage. The identity of his mother shouldn't matter, but he made it so by giving inconsistent answers. He may have described her as an Oromo to gain legitimacy of Oromos, his loyal base. Oromo politics imposes a stringent requirement of blood purity, even if someone is born and raised within the Oromo culture, possesses fluent Oromo language skills, but has any part of their heritage from other ethnicities. In such a context, individuals with mixed heritage may face exclusion and rejection from Oromo politics, which places great emphasis on bloodline purity. Abi may have concealed or downplayed certain aspects of his identity to establish legitimacy within this complex and sensitive arena. In 1990, at the age of 14, Abi Ahmed joined an Oromo rebel group in the fight as child soldier. Over the past three decades, Abi has actively participated in three of Ethiopia's biggest wars, assuming different roles in each. Many argue that his early exposure to violence may have influenced his propensity to resort to violence as a method of addressing Ethiopia's challenges, propelling him from one conflict to another. If Ethiopia were to maintain a record of Abi's lies, much like the Washington Post, it could easily accumulate into the thousands. In the eyes of many Ethiopians, Abi is seen as a narcissistic and fraudulent figure who secured the position of prime minister through deceptive means. commonly known that Abi did not write his doctoral dissertation. Someone else wrote it for him. My name is Abi Ahmed. I'm going to present my PhD proposal. Abi Ahmed's educational background remains enigmatic, riddled with conspicuous gaps and inconsistencies. There is a notable absence of evidence to substantiate his successful completion of high school, acquisition of a bachelor's degree, or pursuit of a master's degree. His professional journey has predominantly centered on military service, commencing as a child soldier in 1990 and subsequently serving as a foot soldier. During the TPLF era, spanning from 1991 to 2018, there is substantial documentation confirming a shortage of well-educated cadres. To bolster its legitimacy, 
the party resorted to a widespread production of counterfeit academic qualifications. This practice emerged due to the fact that a considerable number of these cadres had not even completed elementary school, yet an alarming number of them began claiming to possess PhD degrees. His PhD thesis was found to have a 62% plagiarism level, which is a serious offense that results in revocation. It is highly improbable that his doctoral degree from Addis Ababa University would be revoked due to fear or apprehension. The decision to uphold a fraudulent degree carries substantial ramifications, especially when it involves a prominent public figure or political leader. Such a decision conveys the message that dishonesty and deceit can go unaddressed, eroding the principles of accountability and integrity. Allowing a counterfeit degree to remain unchallenged sets a precedent that undermines public trust and confidence, both in the individual and the institution they represent. A new prime minister, and who is this? His name was Abiy Ahmed, a doctor, a medical doctor, a doctor. We took a cursory look at that, and we believe he is the most highly educated prime minister in the history of the continent. Now, here's a guy who's the highest, highest educated prime minister, we think, in the entire history of the entire continent of Africa. In 2019, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed was honored with the Nobel Peace Prize for his pivotal role in fostering reconciliation between Ethiopia and Eritrea. However, surprisingly, a mere 11 months after receiving this esteemed recognition, Abiy tragically led Ethiopia into a devastating civil conflict, resulting in an estimated loss of nearly one million lives and an astonishing economic toll of $28 billion. In 2023, just 10 months after signing a peace treaty with the TPLF, Abiy initiated another civil war, this time with the Amharas, and further incited tensions with Eritrea over a port. His administration is etched in memory as one of the most violent in Ethiopian history, marked by grave acts of mass atrocities, genocide, and massacres. Tragically, numerous massacres occurred with either his tacit approval or through a failure in the execution of his duty. Abiy go down in history as the first Nobel Peace Laureate to face allegations of genocide and atrocity during his tenure. Abiy Ahmed has faced accusations of perpetrating genocide, participating in massacres, and committing war crimes. The possibility of legal consequences, including imprisonment, remains if the international community decides to take action against him. This fear of potential consequences constantly looms over him. Researchers at Citizens Lab have been tracking the use of spyware for the last several years, and it looks as though the Ethiopian government is using spyware to track journalists even when they're not in Ethiopia itself. Abiy Ahmed played a significant role as one of the co-founders of the mass surveillance agency, INESA. During his time in the intelligence sector, Ethiopia became infamous for its extensive surveillance program, which primarily targeted journalists and human rights activists. Disturbingly, Ethiopia held the unfortunate distinction of being the world's leading jailer of journalists during this period. The intrusive surveillance activities led to loss of life as numerous individuals endured torture or even faced fatal consequences. The program utilized various tactics such as phone hacking, malware, and notably even surveilled Ethiopian journalists residing in the United States. the first ethnic Oromo to be prime minister. Abiy Ahmed is a member of the Oromo people. And began by asking him about the significance of picking a leader from the Oromo ethnic group. Under Abiy Ahmed's leadership, official policy places a significant emphasis on ethnic affiliations in hiring, often prioritizing ethnicity over merit and competence. Abiy Ahmed, who belongs to the Oromo ethnic group, 
has seen a heightened concentration of political and economic power among his loyal base within the ethnic Oromos. This control extends over critical aspects of the nation, including the military, economy, politics, and social spheres, potentially resulting in the marginalization of other ethnic groups. The Oromo political elite's actions have resulted in a systematic erosion of the nation's social fabric, marked by a disregard for established norms, the rule of law, national identity, common sense, and ethical principles. These developments have led to a widespread sense of despair among the 70% of the population that is not of Oromo ethnicity, underlining the urgent need for inclusivity, diversity, and a society that embraces these principles. Abiy Ahmed's constant gaffes and unfiltered talks have infuriated diplomats and heads of states who've had the displeasure of encountering him, ultimately putting Ethiopia in a bad light. They characterize his jokes as embarrassingly rough and shockingly undiplomatic, resembling the humor of a child. Despite his limited grasp of the English language, he audaciously attempts to speak in English, often misspeaking and making his conversations forced unnatural and lacking in substance. In a nation of 120 million people with numerous pressing issues, wasting time discussing irrelevant matters, and he attempting to impress them often leaves them confused and shocked. His tendency to burst into laughter to mask his nervousness further compounds the problem. These behaviors have a significant impact on Ethiopia, causing embarrassment and tarnishing its international image. Abiy Ahmed has faced embarrassment over multiple instances of plagiarism in his speeches. There have been many occasions where he delivered speeches using the words of others without providing appropriate credit. For instance, on November 15, 2017, he conducted an interview. While the interview was carefully crafted, a substantial portion of the content presented as his original words was actually borrowed from various sources. Abi compiled these statements by essentially copying almost every line from diverse sources, including books, interviews, policy briefs, and other references. For a more comprehensive understanding, please refer to the complete video linked in the description. The world is in chaos. There are lots of white Palestinians here. Fundamental upheavals are occurring in many parts of the world. Almost half of the world's wealth is now owned by just one is now owned by just one percent of the world population. Abby Wife Zanash is a prosperity gospel singer releasing so many videos on YouTube. Abi is currently constructing an opulent $15 billion palace for himself. All the while, the nation grapples with deteriorating infrastructure, an ongoing civil war, struggling healthcare facilities, inadequate roads and schools and a staggering 28 million Ethiopians relying on food aid to meet their basic needs. Mao and Gaddafi are known for being leaders who authored four books while in office. Unfortunately, Abi, during his time in leadership, focused on writing several feel-good books, mainly on topics related to prosperity gospel and self-help. These books have been criticized for their perceived lack of originality and resemblance to existing teachings and ideas. Furthermore, there have been allegations that Abi pressured affluent individuals and government employees to buy his books. Many observers note that Abi seems to prioritize his book over governance, despite the severe challenges that Ethiopia faces. I was just seven years old, and my mother imparted a prophecy. I would one day ascend to the throne as the seventh king of Ethiopia. Abiy Ahmed has openly stated on national TV that when he was seven,
His mother told him that he would become the seventh Ethiopian king, and this prophecy greatly influenced his life journey. In 2019, he made a historic decision to rename the ruling party as the Prosperity Party. This significant move marked the first instance of a theocratic political party in Ethiopian contemporary history. It's worth highlighting that under his leadership, the Prosperity Gospel teachings has been officially adopted as government policy in The Ethiopian Orthodox Church, founded in the first century, has a large following of 75 million people and holds a notable place among early Christian communities. Abi boldly stands as the first leader to declare war on the church in modern Ethiopian history. Abi, avid enthusiast of the prosperity gospel and is hell-bent on shoving it down everyone's throats as the supreme faith in Ethiopia. And if that's not infuriating enough, his political henchmen, the Oromo nationalists, view the church as a damned nuisance due to its audacious reach across ethnic lines. What a mess. In a historical first for Ethiopia, and a rare occurrence across the African continent, with the exception of apartheid-era South Africa, certain ethnic groups were prohibited from entering the capital city. He stands as the pioneer of this unprecedented policy.